Hi guys, back again and we're going to start creating visuals or we're at least going to start implementing calculations to get the information we need on the visuals. And again, this is the plan that we have here. Today we're going to focus on, or in this video, we're going to focus on profile information, getting that in there, maybe an injury status, and and that's that's probably about it. That's going to take take a little bit of time to get that stuff in there, and let's let's get it done. So if I go here to my player profiles, we got hometown, position, height, weight. That's probably the information that I'm going to want. All I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna copy these headers. You don't have to do it this way. I'm gonna go into my data viz. I'm just gonna go here and I'm gonna transpose. I'm just gonna change the formatting a little bit by not having a fill in there, remove borders. It's probably just easier, honestly, to just type them in and go like that. So now I have the profile information that I want to go over there. And we're gonna need an injury status somewhere on here. So let's just say injury status here. Just for us to know that the injury status will go right here and we got, you know, some, this is where the profile information will go. And now we need to consider the most important things in this whole thing. A date picker, a comparison picker, or what we're gonna compare the athlete to, whether it's to themselves, the team, or their positional group. And another thing that we need, I, I kind of incorporated in here, but I might as well change it right now, is the athlete's name so that we can pick different athletes, right? So I'm just going to change this now and just say athlete name. These are our filters in yellow, things that we want to manipulate, which we need to consider before making our calculations. So I'm going to type in name, and let's just put the, the name will go here. I'm going to make it yellow and date and comparison. We're not going to need the comparison, I don't think, in this video, um, but it's good to have here so, so we have a framework working with our filters that we need. Now, the easiest thing to do, I think, is to get this profile information in here. And the way that we do that, well, there are two different ways. Similar to our last video, we can use a formula called XLOOKUP or we can use index match, which is two formulae into one. I'm gonna use index max, match and X lookup for the first one. And then from here on out, I'll probably just keep on using index match uh, because I don't know who has access to X lookup. So index equals index. That's asking me, what do I want to put in this cell here? And what I want to put in this cell is in the player pro profiles, I want the position. I know that. And then do a comma match. Okay, we get it. You want a position, but whose position do you want and how do we figure that out? Well, now when I do match, it's asking for a lookup value. And that lookup value is going to be the person's name because we want the position for the person's name. So whoever's name is in here, that's what I want you to match it to. I'm going to remove this because I actually don't need it and it makes it convoluted. And I'm going to lock it in by putting dollar signs in. That means no matter what, if I copy and paste this formula anywhere else, it's always going to refer to cell B1. If I don't do that, actually, maybe I won't do that at the start and then I'll change it. If I don't do that, it'll start referring to different cells relative to the position of this cell. So it'll always refer to the cell that is two columns over and one row up. And we'll see that in a minute. So I want to match B1 to whatever the person's name is in their profile table. So I'm going to type in PBL underscore profile. And notice the first way I did this, I went to the table itself. This time I'm typing it in because both ways work. Now that's a lookup array. So we have the lookup value. We're matching it to whatever's in the lookup array. And then at match type, I'm going to say zero, which is exact match. I'm going to close this equation off and click enter and I'm going to get NA. Oh, well, that makes sense because there's no name in here. It doesn't, there's no idea what's going on. Let's look at our player profiles here. Donald Duck. Okay. Let's type in that name 
and see what happens. Okay, now this changed. It's a forward. Donald Duck is a forward. Is he? Let's let's see. Let's make sure. Yes, he is. Who's not a forward? Tweety Bird is not a forward. Let's try that one and see if that changes to a guard. So in this name, I'm going to type in Tweety Bird. All right, Tweety Bird's a guard. Great. So I'm just going to double-click on that to expand it. Now I'm going to copy this formula and paste it down to hometown because all one, two, three, four of these things work the exact same way. Copy, paste. So now what happened is, like I said in this, since this reference is relative, it is we're looking at the cell that we're matching with name that is two columns over and one row up. Now, for hometown, we're looking at the cell that is one, two columns over and one row up. Well, that's nobody's name, so it doesn't make sense. We only want our name in the cell B1. So we have an error. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to put dollar signs before the B and before the 1. What that does is this, this makes this an absolute reference where no matter where I paste this formula, the name is always going to be matched to whatever's in cell B1 regardless of how many columns or rows it is away. I'll click enter. I'm going to copy this, paste it to hometown. Notice the cell is still B1. And the only thing that I need to change is instead of position, I want hometown. Copy that, paste it down and paste it down to height and weight. Now instead of hometown, I want height. She's, wow, well, yeah, she's, she's a short bird. Um, and weight, I'm guessing she's a light bird too. Four pounds, yikes. So now we have profile data for Tweety Bird. And we can test this. Let's see what uh, Donald Duck is this time. A little bit taller, a little bit heavier, also from Disney World. Let's see if we can find someone else who's from somewhere else. Wow, oh, that's a long. Charlie Brown, he's from somewhere else. Let's try him. So let's do Charlie Brown. Great. So things are working from our from a profile standpoint. I'm just going to double click that for now. Eventually, we'll, we'll we'll sort sort it out. And oftentimes, just because home hometown may not be relevant, and depending on how things look, may decide to remove it because it takes up a lot of space um, laterally, longitudinally, which can sometimes get in the way of things. So now let's move on to injury status. What we want is we're going to have a date. And we want this person's injury status for this date. It's almost like a key performance indicator, right? We just want to know based on whatever date it is, were they healthy or were they not? So now this is going to work a little bit differently than our first formula because index match does not accommodate for multiple criteria, if that makes sense. So we matched on name, B1 to name, but now we're going to match on some other cell, B1 and name, and also I1 and date. We're going to have to do this in a different way, and I'll do it in the index match way, and I'll also do it in the XLOOKUP way. But I might as well right now while I'm here just to get this in a little bit more. Let's do this, this exact same formula in the XLOOKUP way. Equals XLOOKUP. This is a little bit easier to do. So the lookup value is that, and we're going to lock it down, is the name. And the lookup array is going to be the table profile name. That's what we want to match it to. And the return array, in other words, what we want in this cell here, is going to be the table profile position. And if I were to copy this down and change um, the position to be hometown, we should see the same hometown because this is doing the same thing that index match did. Okay. So now I'm going to remove that. And we're going to do index match with multiple criteria to get the injury status. So we're going to do the exact same thing that we did here. I'm going to do it again from scratch, just because. Do equals index. This stays the same where we get 
what we want to be in the cell first for the array. And what we want in the cell is the person's injury status. And what I'm going to end up doing is changing a table name now. But so I'm going to type in PBL underscore. Well, I know that my table, if I go to table performance, open the bracket, there's no injury status in there. I go to table profile, open bracket, there's no injury status in there. I'm looking for table one in this case because I didn't name my daily monitoring table. But let's do that first. So right now it's under table one. I go to table one, open bracket. Now I see my injury status. But let's make this easier on us. I'm going to go in here, table design, and I'm going to name this TBL underscore daily. Okay. That's how I just changed the name of this table in this table name area. And you have to be clicked inside the table if you're not. There's even there's no table design thing here. But now if I go to my data viz and I try this equation again or calculation again, equals index, TBL underscore, oh, there it is, TBL underscore daily. Open bracket, injury status. So we want the injury status. I do comma, match. It starts the same way, but now instead of getting one lookup value, we're going to type in the number one. I'll explain why in a second. The comma, and then we're going to open parentheses, and we're going to start uh, picking the things that we want to match on. So the first thing we want to match on is this name, B1, and we're going to type in equals to table daily name. Close parentheses. Now we have one matching criteria. The next one we're going to do is we're going to do a multiplication sign there. Open parentheses. Click on the date. And I, again, I'm going to lock it in because we want it to be an absolute reference. So we want to match on when this name is whatever the name is in the daily monitoring database. And whenever this date is whatever the date is in the daily monitoring database. Right now we don't have a date here, but we'll fix that in a second. Equals table. Daily date. I'm going to close the parenthesis and do comma zero and do a couple after. I'm going to click enter. And we get an error. That's because there's no date in here. One thing that I want to mention really quickly is my Excel version, I don't have to hold down control shift and enter for this to work. In older versions, you might, or if you're on a Mac, you might. The same for any index match formula. So I'm just gonna do it that way just so you see what it looks like. If you hold down Control, Shift, and click Enter, or Command, Shift, and click Enter if you're on a Mac, maybe, um, you'll see these squiggly brackets on either side of the formula. You may have to do that. I don't, so I'm not going to. I'm just gonna click Enter normally. Now, I need to put in a date. Let's look into our daily monitoring. All right, a date, 10-18-2017, Donald Duck, he's full. So let's try 10-18-2017. Oh, wait, but we're not looking. Let's change this to Donald Duck. He's full. And now let's try to find a time where he might not be full. 11-1-2017, he was not full. Let's try that. He was out, and he was out here too. Now let's do this in the X lookup way. And the way that we start that off is the same way that we did here, where we go equals X lookup, and then we start typing in pretty much the values that we want to match on um, the multiple. I don't know why everything's so different, but. So we're going to type in one lookup value, which is the name. Okay. And we're going to type an and sign and a date. And then we're going to do a comma. And we're going to return both arrays with an and sign. So the first array is table daily name. And the second one is table daily date. And then I'm going to click comma, and now it's asking for a return array. I'm going to owe them 
uh, the, the value that I want in this cell, which is going to be injury status. So table daily injury status. I'm going to close it off. And it's the same. Again, I don't know if you have to hold control, shift, enter, or command, shift, enter, um, if you're on a Mac or if you have an older version. But again, both of these things accomplish the same task. Let's just try Charlie Brown. Everything is, is going to change the, the same way. And that's all I have for this video. Uh, in the next video, we're going to start building out more of this stuff. So I hope, I hope this was beneficial for you. Let me know if you have any questions. And thank you for watching.